We're finally putting Ruby on the road. <laughs> yeah, for a whole 20 minute drive. No, we are not hitting the road and going out to explore. We are relocating <laughs> about 20 minutes down the road to hunker down for another few months. Yeah, we've, we've decided that two months in this spot was long enough and it's, we just have not enjoyed staying here. It doesn't facilitate coming outside and mm -hmm. hanging out. It's just dirt, gravel, and, and mulch. Um, it's just not inviting. So we're moving to a place we've been to many times before. It's a place that we love yeah. right outside of San Antonio. So we're going to head out that way. And we figured this would be the perfect time to show you our <laughs> breakdown. That's right. And bonus, mm -hmm. we're going to switch roles here. Normally mm -hmm. I do everything on the outside to include hooking yeah. up the Jeep, but I'm a wing down. So it's a little tough to manipulate everything with like when I can't move my arm as, as I like to. So Stacy gets to do all the outside stuff and I'm moving to the inside. <laughs> and it's something we've been meaning to do for a while. Yeah. We just, you know, you get into your rut and you do what's comfortable and um, it just makes things go faster. So this time, since we're only driving about 20 minutes, is the perfect time for me to jump in and do all the Phil stuff and Phil do all of my stuff. And Oh, by the way, that does include the drive because that's <laughs> feel stuff too. Yes, I am a little bit nervous about it, but we did a pre-drive yesterday where I drove the Jeep where we're going just so I would feel comfortable about the direction we're going. I only have four turns, two left, two right, so I think I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Not that she counted. Uh, yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. As another bonus for you, we've created checklists for you to download so you can download them and tweak it for your own RV. Yeah, that's a pretty neat deal right there. Now, normally our checklist for departure starts the night before. Yeah, and that consists of just putting away most of the big stuff. If we have the, the carpet out, the chairs, the fire pit, things like that, we'll go ahead and stow those the night before. To, oh, and to include the bikes. Oh, you'll see on the checklist the night before checkoffs, and then you'll see the day of checkoff. My next chore is up here on the roof. I'm gonna take down the Wee Boost. We don't put this up every location we go to, but we do put it up most of the time. So down it comes for transport. Those my backup so I don't have to carry things down the ladder. You can definitely tell we've been sitting for a while. The windshield is pretty dirty. We need, may want to wash it before we hit the road. The pool noodles help protect the blades, so it keeps the sun from hitting the rubber and helps them to last just a little bit longer. The UV rays can be pretty brutal on the windshield wiper blades. All right, of course I have to do the tanks because I'm doing Phil's job. So this is not going to be my favorite thing to do, I can tell you already, but got to do it. You'll see on the checkoff list, it's going to show closing the gray tank the night before. Normally we would do that so we can collect as much gray water as possible to help flush out the hose after we empty the black tank. I am going to open the black tank and get that going. So one of the things we like to do before we get underway and close in the slides is just check the slides, make sure there's no critters, no twigs, leaves, debris of any kind that might get pulled into the RV. Don't forget to check underneath the slide as well. Phil has found wasps nests and a couple other things that have decided to make our rig their home. So it only takes a day or so before that can start happening. The black tank is empty and now I'm gonna turn on the flush so we can put water into the black tank to help flush all the extra debris out. Now it's really important that you pay attention once you turn this on because if you overfill the tank, it, the water's not gonna stop going in. It's just gonna keep going and your toilet is actually gonna start filling and can overflow. So this is something you don't wanna forget about. Yeah, ask us how we know. <laughs> <laughs> ask Phil how he knows. <laughs> to make sure we don't forget about the black tank fill, we always set a timer. So since this is Phil's phone, Phil, set your timer. Hey Siri, set the timer for five minutes. Okay, five minutes and counting. There we go. All right, time's up. We'll let that empty out and see if we need to do it again. It is all empty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close the black tank 
and we're gonna leave the water running oh about 30 seconds because we want to make sure there's a layer of water in the back in the bottom because we don't want to get you know that pyramid that gets all funky in the black tank so now we're going to disconnect the water and stow all the fresh water hoses and stuff first. Now, of course, it's taken me much longer than it takes Phil because he has it down pat. And it'll be the same way for the inside. Once you get your rhythm going, you guys are going to fly through your breakdown and your setup. But if you switch like we're doing right now, it's going to take you a little longer your first few times. Phil's done a really cool thing here and he's put quick release valves on all the fresh water. So that way it's really simple to unhook and rehook up when you get there. Maybe. Top. Top. Pull the top down. This one? Which one? Here? Yes. Before we unhook the hoses, we always do a little bit of a release here. They don't get sprayed because they are under pressure. So the water is already off. So I'm just going to undo it a little bit just to make sure I don't get sprayed at the front. So you'll notice this hose does not have a quick release. Phil did that on purpose so he would always know which one flush the black tank and which one we use for fresh water. Next, I'm going to take off the water pressure regulator. Now, if you can only buy one thing for your rig before you hit the road, this is a must. It regulates how much pressure the water going into your rig is coming in at. If the water's coming in under too much pressure, you could actually burst your water line. So this is a must. The part I've been waiting for, the dreaded sewer hose. This is not nice. <laughs> Although there are many women who do this all the time. Yep. So I'm just a little spoiled. That she is. First up, I'm double checking to make sure both of my tanks are closed and they are closed. All right, and then we'll unhook it. Phew. That's a dirty job. That brought me a ton of joy. You just don't know. It's time to put this guy to work. Easy peasy. I've done this before, just not her way. Well, my way's the right way, right? <laughs> table didn't actually come with our RV. It was in our house when we sold our sticks and bricks, so we keep it upside down on the bed. Do not forget to look under your bed um, prior to closing up your slides. We put a lot of things under here when we're parked to include our fridge rods. So it's always good to get take a peek, make sure everything is out from under there. You don't want to you don't want to find out you left something under there because you're closing your slide in. Next, I'm going to secure the contents of the fridge, and the reason we use these tension rods in the refrigerator is this door latch up here is not the greatest, and this door has flown open on us a few times driving down the road. So now. We kind of, we play Tetris in the fridge. We push things back, get everything nice and tight so there's not a lot of movement in there. And then we put the tension rods in to help keep things in place. One of the last things Stacy does is she goes through and makes sure that all of our drawers and cabinets um, are all closed so they don't fly open and things spill out. And so it's just, it's important to make sure they're all latched, especially these mirror doors back here. You don't want uh, these flopping around and busting that mirror. We always make sure we turn off the water heater, and in this case, the electric one prior to hitting the road because once we unplug we'll be on battery power we don't want that sucking down the uh, batteries unnecessarily. We started out very early on using these slappers bracelets and we wrote out all the big ticket items that we needed to make sure that we checked prior to either getting underway 
and or when we come in to make sure that we turn them on or set them up. They're very easy to, to use. We just put them on a steering wheel and as we break down like we're doing today, we'll go through and things that have been done, i.e. the satellite switch has been turned off, we pull it off. If we get ready to leave and we still have slappers bracelets on here, then we didn't do our job right. We all know there's a great debate online about whether to turn your propane off or leave it on while you're going down the road. And of course, a lot of people say it's easy for us to say turn it off because we don't have a fridge that uses propane. We have um, a residential fridge. But for us, for safety, just from the research I've done and what I've read, we are going to lock her up. One of the last things we do on the inside is to kind of give the floor a good sweep. That way, when we bring the slides in, the rollers don't catch stuff and scratch up the floor and, and it gets caught in the roller. So we just kind of give it a good one good sweep before we get underway. As you can see, the rig is way over there behind me and our breaker box is in a weird spot. It is not on our pedestal. We always, always turn off the breaker before we do anything else like, you know, unplug the power or the surge protector. This is number one. So let's shut it off. I've already turned off the breaker as you just saw. There's nothing on my surge protector and, and of course we recommend a surge protector for everyone. Now I can unplug it. Get ready to close the bedroom slide. Just wait for Stacy to give me the signal. Heard that? All right, here we go. All right. I made it all the way around the corner. Woohoo! <laughs> all right, I'm gonna hook up the Jeep for the first time ever. So Phil definitely is gonna have to walk me through this one. We interrupt this breakdown video to bring you our winners. Yep, we wanna thank everyone for joining our contest and sharing it with their friends. Before we announce our four winners, we wanna let you know our shirts are on sale now through May 31st. Once the campaign closes, all shirts will be printed and mailed out. Once you receive your shirt, don't forget to share it on social media with the hashtag YMRVSomeday and hashtag YMRVRED. We would love to see where you are and what you are up to, especially now that all the travel bans are lifting and parks are slowly opening back up. To use the hashtag YMRVRED, you're gonna to have to wear your red shirts on Fridays. That's right. If you don't have a red shirt yet, now's the perfect time to purchase one. Absolutely. And when you wear your red shirt on Fridays, don't forget to hashtag us and thank our military. Yeah, and if you're not if you're not familiar with what red stands for, it's remember everyone deployed where the red comes from. That's right. And I'll leave a link below that talks more about our red Fridays. We're hoping to do good for our veteran charity, Homes for Our Troops where $1 from every shirt sale will go to that charity. If you want to learn more about Homes for Our Troops, which is a wonderful charity for our veterans, I will have a link on our website so you can find out all about them. If you would like to make a direct donation, I will have a link for that as well. We had a great idea from one of our subscribers, Brady, who suggested that when we turn on the shirt sale, that we also turn on or open up the tip jar that's there, or I think it's... It's called tip jar. Okay, tip jar it is. Um, so if anyone left or leaves a tip, we'll send to the charity as well. Our last shirt campaign, the tips that we did receive, which were freaking awesome, by the way, we were not expecting any of that. We did round up and send that to the charity as well. So that's exactly what we'll do this time. Yeah, so a dollar from every shirt, and whatever tip you leave, whether it's another dollar, two dollars, whatever it is, it'll go towards the charity. Without further ado, and drum roll please. The winners are... The winner of the Today is Someday hat is Paige Sesson. The winner of the You, Me, and the RV t-shirt is Melissa Fairbanks. The winner of the Military Living Guide is Frank Uversal. And the winner of the Military Living subscription is George Statler. Congratulations to our four winners. We will send you an email getting your information so that we can send your prizes to you. That's right, and if you don't see an email by this weekend, make sure you check your spam account so you don't miss it. Or your junk file, or your archive file, whatever you call it, but 
you, me, and the RV should never be in the archived or deleted file. <laughs> so don't it. forget, if you want to buy a Today is Someday t-shirt, um, the link will be below, or you can go to todayissomeday.net and check out the merch page where you'll have all your info and links right there. I love the lingo, merch. All right, that's it for the update and the break-in. Now back to our video. These first? No, those are locking pins, babe. <laughs> Obviously, we're going to have a problem here. <laughs> oh, here they are. These ones. Yeah. All right, so you want to put them in so the pull pin is out on the outward side. The outward side. So put it in and then turn it towards you. So that way. Like that? Yeah. Now put it all the way. You got to push it. Well, how do I know which way? You, no, 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 way? no. Put it in and turn it till you feel it seed and then turn it back to you. There you go. Now bring it back to you so it locks in place. There, there you go. Just like that. Okay. They're a little heavy. I know. And they're stiff. So you gotta flip it over and then pull it apart. Flip it this way? No. Flip it to you so that's flat. Wait. It's not. Might I suggest never doing this in flip-flops? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it goes now, this way? Yep, now so spread how, them apart. How do you know that this goes up? I mean, is that, how do you know which way it goes? The aren't these go up? Yes. Okay, that's what I'm asking you. So break them apart. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, people, this is heavy. Okay. Flip it back over. How do I shrink it? Push, push the locking pin down, the arm, the low black this. bar. There you go. Do I go under and it goes right here? Yes, go under. I know if it's all the way. The door will close and lock behind it. Got a little notch. All right. That. And don't pull that. All right. Now keep all of that underneath or come up over the top. Yeah, right there. Where? Here? Where the hook, the hook is connected. Yes. Okay. Now your air, you see where it is on the right Under? Side. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Go over the top. Go over the top. Over. Sorry. Yeah. Is it? How does it? Oh, it's another. Yeah. We have our cheat sheet printed out here. We have a tow ready side and we have a drive ready side. So that way we can quickly put it into whatever gear or out of gear or transmission, whatever you want to call it without having to have the big old book with us. So, we're just gonna walk right through the instructions here. Except for I can't reach anything, so I need to go up for it a little bit. All right. Run, brake, neutral, button, Wait for blinking red. All right. 
start engine, hold the brake pedal in. Release parking brake. Shift into reverse. Release brake pedal for five seconds. Five, shift into neutral. Apply brake. Shift to park. Shut off. And that's it. And now we're ready for tow. Yes, we're ready to go. And your job is walking gifts, because that's my normal job. I know. You should have been doing all that while I was hooking up the car, while slaving back yeah. there. Ooh, would have left the Jeep behind. <laughs> all right, we're going to do this. Woo! Nervous. Ready? I am most nervous about turns. That's what I'm most nervous about. Phil's most nervous about me just being here. My knees are shaking. You'll be fine. What's that? Whoopee. Your, um... In three quarters oh. of a mile. <laughs> Turn left on the Holy I'm already scared. It was just a navigation. Okay, <sighs> All right. Phew. All right, let's do this. 20 minutes. Just got 20 minutes. Well, maybe maybe 30 for me or 40. All right, next turn and half a mile. All right. You're clear, right? All right, so problem number one is me actually being able to push the pedal far enough to go. Are you all the way forward? Yeah. And my toe, I'm, my toe is like at the gas pedal. Be in your foot. Well, be in your foot well, that's not really gonna make a big difference. Leaving this place, the sun's about to break. Y'all riding shotgun. The feeling would change. I'm wide awake. Take me away now. Don't you blame me Yeah, this feeling I've got's making me crazy Making me crazy So, I'm just gonna drive, drive, drive Alright, we survived. I made it all the way here. So, phew! Moral of the story is, everyone should be able to drive their RV in case of emergency. Yep, and have a fun for right side tires. <laughs> Well, because she rode the median all the way here. Well, we made it. My hands are still sweaty. Oh, man. I was so nervous. We, but... did, we did. She did fine. She <laughs> knows how to do it. She's just too short for the, the pedals don't move. The seat's all the way up forward. So we've got to figure out a way um, to either attach some blocks to it or something so that if she had to drive long term, she could. Yeah. My tippy toe was literally on the gas. The end of this video somehow got deleted and it's somewhere in the abyss. So I have to end out the video all by myself. You're going to miss Phil's quick wit and his crazy jokes because he is recovering from the surgery he had today. What we did want to let you know, the slappers bracelets that you saw on the steering wheel were actually for the Jeep. So don't worry about me driving away without doing something on my checklist. Also, in the future, I will be wearing proper shoes whenever I'm hitching up the Jeep. <laughs> I, I didn't put anything on my toe. I didn't bash it or anything, but that thing was pretty heavy and it was a little difficult to manipulate. For those of you who are planning to download the checklists, there are links down below or you can head to todayissomeday.net. You have two options. You have a PDF and an Excel. So one you can manipulate and change and make your own and the other one you can use what I already have and add on to it. There's spaces for you to add things that you're going to do for your personal RV. So thanks for watching everyone. Be sure and hit that subscribe button and I will see you on the road.